Hello everyone, this is Lisa Espinosa, spiritual career coach and modern day priestess. I'm so happy to be here with you today for day five of the Priestess Novena. So if you have been with me before, it's so great to connect with you again. And if this is your first time, welcome. Hello, Donna. So the focus of my work is to help others align with their soul, their beautiful inner light that true essence within and share their medicine with the world. Hello, Jill. And this practice is from my second book that I'm working on, Birthing the Priestess Within. And this is a nine day journey to connect deeply with your priestess medicine. And the call, the way I define the call to the priestess path is really the call to be a channel of unconditional love for yourself and for the world. And this practice is all about that. And this, this particular novena, is the theme is being the light of the world. So if you're watching this, I know that you're so led to hear. Thank you for saying yes. And today, as you know, is the new moon solar eclipse. So exciting, such a powerful day to gather for new beginnings, for a reset. Right? But whenever we have thresholds like this of new beginnings, often there's a big release. And it's like there's been, there's, it's, it's leading up to it, right? You've been releasing, you've been releasing, you've been releasing, you've been releasing. And then the new moon arrives, particularly with an eclipse. And it's like, you're ready for the new, but there might be just some, some like big or subtle or just like a subtle layer of release that happens. And sometimes it's just your awareness for you to know like, oh, that shifted. I know I got a really, I was, I wasn't thinking this was going to happen, but I received a really um, helpful, that's not even the right word, just, just a really divine um, layer of understanding about my book, Birthing the Priestess Within. That was really so perfect and i'm really celebrating that so whatever insights you've received whether you're aware of them or not i'm so glad you're here hello jan so let's open up our space and just you know breathing mindfully breathing with intention breathing the with the intention of being present in this moment knowing that you're exactly where you're meant to be in this moment Breathing with the intention of connecting with your beautiful heart. Feeling like we were saying yesterday, I think it was with that flower in your heart, right? Opening. And your breath connecting you to the earth. Feeling Mother Earth breathing along with you. And feeling the resonance of everyone here, everyone who's watching live, everyone who's watching the replay, whenever it is you watch it, know that we are resonating together. That there is a reason why, why, why we are all gathered in this way. And visualizing those roots of light going down your legs and out the bottoms of your feet all the way to the heart of the earth. Letting your nervous system settle. Letting your nerve endings connect with the nerve endings of Gaia Earth. Feeling very grounded and present. And as we do that, let's also connect all of our roots together with each other those of us who are here live, those of you watching the replay, we create this beautiful vessel, this beautiful container of love and light. Because we know that our ability to receive miracles, to bless others with miracles, increases when we're gathered together with this common vision. And of course, knowing that as we connect our roots, we, we, it's an empowering connection, right? There's no codependency here. There's no rescuing each other. It's just this beautiful empowered gathering as we breathe in all of that energy moving up the layers of the earth up the bottoms of your feet up your feet and legs all the way up to the crown of your head good 
And let's do our mudra of presence. So bringing our left hand to our left knee, we raise our right arm up, bring our hand down and we say, I am present, I am here. And two more times. I am present, I am here. And again, I am present, I am here. And welcome your beautiful divine support to surround you. And I welcome this beautiful circle of miracles and light and transformation and healing to surround all of us who are here live and who are watching the replay. So we bring the palms of our hands together and we bow to each other and begin with a namaste. Namaste, everyone. Yay! So day five, we're like over halfway there. This is so exciting. It's so interesting because it's always for me, it's like we start and it feels like nine days seem so long and then suddenly it's like, whoa, how did all these days pass? So I know it's all perfect and divine. And today as I was uh, preparing because it's preparing in the sense that everything prepares you, right? That question of, you know, your life is always training you, is always preparing you. And one of the things that came up actually yesterday, and one, and I know some of you are in the priestess mentoring program, that I was really connecting with the heart, our heart's prayer, right? Like, what is a deep heart's prayer that you have for 2021? Like, so, and I was connecting with it because one of my my dear teachers, she invites us all to choose an impossible goal for our career. And as I've been really, you know, connecting with that, well, all of this year working on that and, and, it, and by working, it's all, yes, there's action steps, but so much of it is thought work, right? Clearing your thoughts, healing your thoughts that, that limit you, that are f afraid to even have such an expansive vision. So as I've been really reflecting, I also, I recognize, oh, wait, like it's really... We can look at this impossible goal as a heart prayer that we have, a deep heart's prayer. And as we, you know, end 2020 and we get ready to begin to enter the threshold of 2021, I f it's so interesting. Two things are happening at once, right? One, we're, we're tying up loose ends, right? We're still in 2020 and we should be, right? We want to stay present. We're still in 2020. We're still celebrating, acknowledging all the growth, acknowledging all the healing. We're still wrapping things up. I know there's a lot of things that I'm still um, creating and ending. So you might have the same, right? So that's really important. And because our soul is so expansive, we're also, as we do that, we're also preparing for 2021. We're preparing for the crossing of this threshold into the new year and so both happening simultaneously and it's interesting both of those can happen at that infinity point right that that point of infinity that we sit on for nine minutes right that is that place of timelessness where we can answer all divine when we can access all divine knowing that's the place where paradoxically we can by being in that present moment, we can connect with whatever it is we need to connect to from the past and access the visions of the future in a way that's still very present. So not by, you know, people call future tripping where you're just like never in the present moment because you're always thinking of the future or you're never in the present moment because you're always caught up in the past, right? So, so being on the infinity point today with that intention of, okay, I'm in that point where I'm ending, you know, I'm still in 2020 and I want to make sure to stay present. I want to make sure to finish off the lessons, to do all the celebrating and integrating that needs to happen so that when I enter 2021, I don't have lingering things from 2020. And I'm also opening up to the visions of my soul. So one of the ways that you're opening up, if, you, if you're guided to, and if you're watching this, I feel like that's part of your soul inviting you inviting you for this is like to start to ask 
and maybe you already know, but if you're not sure or you're doubting it, you know, asking, okay, what is my heart's prayer for 2021? Like, what is my soul's prayer for 2021? It's like this deep desire I have. And I love this, even though it can be triggering, right? When my teacher first said impossible goal, I was like, well, why would I choose an impossible goal? That seems like you're setting yourself up for failure. But then when she, you know, I'm kind of bringing the spirituality to it, but when she was talking about it of like, well, the only reason it's impossible is because our thoughts aren't aligned with it yet, right? And so as I yes, I've reflected on that this whole year, it's like, oh, well, same thing, right? Whatever spiritual, whatever prayer you have that you might be afraid to even articulate, to even look at, to even recognize as this heart's longing because it might feel impossible to some parts of you or many parts of you. Right? And I was talking about this with my priestess. Um, my students are on the priestess mentoring program. Some of you are here. And I was really feeling that. Like, oh, it's, it just kind of came out of my mouth. Like, oh, your impossible goal is your heart's prayer. Like this deep desire that you have. So I was, as I was, this priestess novena today was getting closer and closer. That just kept coming. And I was like, oh, of course, on the new moon solar eclipse, of course we would do this prayer this we would sit on this infinity point and both celebrate and integrate 2020 and be open to receive what is your heart's prayer for 2021 and you know without any pressure to fully receive i mean let me rephrase that i really believe and and so many spiritual traditions and divine teachers say when we pray we get an answer when we knock the door will open, right? All these things. And yet here in the earth realm, there's plenty of times when we're like, well, I prayed and nothing happened, right? There's that. But but really understanding that it's always answered. And either when we might not be aware of it yet, or for whatever reason, our soul decides it's not the best time for us to be aware of it, or we block it because we're so anxious to get it. We're so, we're so eager to get it that it's almost like we overthink it. So when we're sitting on the infinity point, you know, allow yourself to just be in the beginner's mind and open mind and allow it to be okay if you don't consciously receive the vision, the answer, the image. Because know that you are receiving it and it's going to come in divine timing, the vision that you're meant to see. So that's what we're about today, right? Nothing more, nothing less than, than really having the courage because it takes a lot of courage. It's, it's way easier to settle, even though in the long run it's not. In, in the moment, it can feel easier to just keep it realistic, right? Or keep it, um, yeah, keep it realistic or or keep it just kind of like, oh, I'll just be open to whatever comes. And there's something, of course, powerful about surrender. And I've recognized in this year, as I've been really committed to my impossible goal in my career, that it is an act of surrender. And as I've said before, surrender is so misunderstood. People can hear the word surrender and think that it's, it's easy or it's giving up or it's passive. And surrender is none of those. Divine surrender takes courage. It is active in the sense that if we're passive, surrender can become just kind of like, like we're surrendering to our ego rather than surrendering to the divine. So that's really important. When we surrender to the ego, it's a whole different thing. We're just kind of like, whatever, you know, it's like a powerless feeling. It's it's, um, but when we surrender to the divine, it's, it's like a leap of faith, right? That's different. So I'm excited about this and I love doing it together because I know that when we do it together, we, our light shines on each other so that we can receive more of the vision that we might, than we might be able to receive when we're doing this alone. And, 
Yeah, that's really important because this is the other thing that's coming through really clearly right now. When we truly tune in to our soul's prayer, it benefits the world. Everyone benefits from it because that's how our soul always operates. It always increases, enhances, evolves, not just us, but everyone in our circle, everyone that comes in our you know, in, into our gravitational pull. So this is something that isn't selfish. It's something that is, yes, it's about us, but it's about the collective. This is how we birth the new earth, right? This is how we are these living beacons of light and way showers and wisdom keepers and light keepers and all these earth angels, right? All these beautiful words that describes the same thing, really. So I invite you as we enter this journey to have the courage. It's okay to be scared. It's okay for parts to be scared or skeptical or, or just numb or disconnected or, you know, just be curious about how you're how your inner world is receiving this or maybe your inner world's like i'm ready yes this is great but if it's not that it doesn't mean you're not supposed to do this please please know that that is why the the human journey is so heroic because many times when you're exactly in the right path things feel uncomfortable and resistance can come up many many times that's how it feels so it's and it's so easy to to feel that and then think well this must mean i'm not supposed to do this and that's yes there is a body's wisdom and as we grow in our spiritual path we start to discern when our body's wisdom is telling us yes or no and we follow that versus when different parts of us have wounding or trauma or old beliefs that are getting triggered and we're feeling that through our body, all right? It's like two different things, and, and that's a whole kind of other, other lesson, other, um, other conversation. But but important to name here, right? I remember I used to get so confused because teachers would often say, "Well, just listen to your body," and and you know, just is it saying yes or no? And I'd be like, "Ah, my body's in knots. <laughs> that must mean no, right?" It was that was confusing to me because I hearing that it made me feel like well if it's a yes my body must just have to feel like yes like it must just feel like it's floating on air and a lot of times it didn't feel that way it felt like it wanted to crawl under a rock or you know all sorts of things and 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 I had to through my inner process and finding you know, of course wonderful teachers to to start to untangle right the the trauma and the wounding and the burdens and the old thought patterns that were living in my body and causing that so i just want to name that for you because i'm just aware as you keep stepping into leadership i'm aware because as i keep stepping into leadership i'm amazed even though i knew this how hello colleen how fear just keeps coming it's like you would think that you just i i would part of me would love this that at some point after making all these courageous decisions you just kind of arrive and and then you just kind of coast but i have not experienced this it's just you you keep being courageous and you keep being courageous and of course it gets in some ways easier but then there's the next big leap and it happens all over again right then you're again feeling maybe your heart flutter or your stomach tighten up and and it's so important to breathe through that and yes listen to your body but first discern is this my body's wisdom or is this my body's trauma right like both can inform and so i all of that connected to what is your heart's prayer because our when we connect with our heart's prayer it is beautiful it is exciting it is an adventure it is so healing such a blessing for you and the world and it is often quite triggering right hello Amy and so we want to know that and know that it's normal and know that it doesn't mean you're doing it wrong and it doesn't mean you're not supposed to be a leader and it doesn't mean any of that it just means you're human we're in the we're a soul having a human experience and that is why earth school is so challenging right and and also so expansive 
right, because of that. So let's go ahead and enter this space. So just kind of letting all of that settle, just kind of see what landed, see where, what pinged, right? See what like lit you up or, or, or maybe brought up a little nervousness or a lot, that's okay. Just kind of notice. As you think about your hearts, your deep hearts prayer for 2021. Just notice, just be curious and what comes up for you. And, and I don't even mean like you need to know what it is, although maybe that's what's coming up, but just notice your inner landscape. Notice if there's a curiosity, notice if there's excitement, notice if there's fear or nervousness. Just notice it all and know that it's all okay. And together, it's all of us visualize our heart lighting up and as our heart lights up and this light radiates from our heart, let's go ahead and all of us create more sacred space. We just like, like literally see like light and your heart which is a unified quantum field creates more space if your brain is like what how does this work it's okay you don't need to know how this works you're just having that intention okay i can create more space why can we create more space because we are a hologram of the divine that means that every quality that the divine has we have and the divine is always creating space so we can create space all of us together, let's create space. And we're creating this space so that as we do this inner journey, we, there's a lot of space. We can observe, we can be curious without getting overwhelmed. So let's practice that beautiful divine inheritance that we have of creating space. And as we create space, again, just notice what comes up when you start to pose that question of what is my heart's prayer for 2021? What is that deep longing that many of my parts think is impossible for 2021? Notice. Notice what comes up as you sit with that question. And let your soul's light touch every part of you that responds, If, especially any parts that might feel nervous or might just kind of numb out. Let your soul just touch them with light. Remember your soul is both so powerful and gentle. Your soul is never trying to change your parts. Your soul just loves your parts. And when we, when, when we receive unconditional love, we absolutely, our consciousness raises. It's, it's just like law. There's no, so your soul's not here to fix your parts or analyze your parts or any of that. Your soul's just here to love your parts. And when, you're, when your soul loves your parts unconditionally, which your soul does, so when your parts are able to receive even just a little bit of that and then they start to receive more and more. It just organically happens that there's higher consciousness that starts to elevate. So let's all of us enter our temple. So see in front of you those beautiful doorways, those beautiful um, gateways. See in front of you that entryway to your temple and just step through. Step through to the temple and this, this crystalline temple. Seeing those infinity symbols on the walls, maybe on the ceiling, but definitely seeing that beautiful infinity symbol engraved on the floor of your beautiful temple.
And notice how this infinity symbol looks today, right? Your, the infinity symbol is always alive. It's not just like static. So I see just a lot of light. It's a blues flowing through there. It's beautiful stars. But just notice how it appears to you. There's no wrong way. And as you walk towards your infinity symbol, of course, knowing that your soul is with you, Find your way to that, ins that infinity point, right? That point in the center of the infinity symbol and, and find yourself sitting on that point. And as you're sitting on that point today, I see, you know, the infinity point horizontal and also like a vertical one. So it almost looks like you're sitting on the center of a propeller. And as you sit there, bringing that intention of 2020, right? The celebrations, the integration of what's unfolded in 2020, the, the things you might still need to finish in 2020. Just kind of energetically feel that energy that's coming of completion. It's not there yet, but it's coming, this completion of 2020. And at the same time, notice this other loop of 2021. This other loop of 2021 and, and starting to prepare for that new cycle. So you're, you're at the center. And you're at the center, so you're in the present moment. And in this present moment, you can access all those timelines. And you don't need to understand how. And I see, I feel Mother Mary entering this sacred space. And her heart so open as always. Got a beautiful golden crown today and she's coming to support you as you sit in this question of what is my heart's prayer for 2021 and mother mary what she's doing is she's just what she's gonna do this is so beautiful what she's saying she's just gonna pray She's just gonna pray for you during these nine minutes, well, for all of us. But, but the thing about Mother Mary, which I think I've shared this before, one of my teachers said once, and I was like, oh my gosh, she's, she's naming exactly what I feel. That when you mentor with Mother Mary, you feel like you're her only student, right? Like, like she's just, there's such a personal connection. That it's, it's so personal. So feel that right now. Feel how she's just there for you. She loves you. She knows you. And she's just like, I'm just going to pray. I'm going to sit here and pray for you. And just pray during these nine minutes. And, and not, she's not praying because she thinks you're in trouble or anything like that. But she's just praying to add the power of her prayer can you just imagine well you don't have to imagine it we're gonna be there with mother mary she's praying for us she's praying for you as you sit in this center of infinity and you open with courage to receive what is your heart's deepest prayer for 2021 that prayer that might seem impossible and you're just gonna ask for it to be revealed and remember what i said earlier no pressure that you have to consciously be aware of it right now. So let's go ahead and um, light our candle. Hello, Claudia. And if you have your candle, look at how much mine has burned. I'm so excited. So have your candle lit up if you don't have it today. If, you, if you're new and you don't have yours, that's fine. But I invite you to get a candle for this. And of course, you can always go back to day one through four if you're just joining us now. So we're going to do our priestess invocation. 
and then we're gonna sit for nine minutes. All right, everyone. And and yeah, just to see Mother Mary as she's just so lovingly offering her beautiful, powerful prayers. All right, so we say this together. As this candle burns, my soul within me burns. As this wax melts, resistance in me melts. Nine days to clear lifetimes of fear. As I give, I receive. As I heal, I am healed. Doors open, I walk through. I am ready for the new. Abundance flows with ease and grace, for I have finally found my place. And remember, where is your place? Your place is your heart, is you, right? Is I am becoming home. I am becoming home. You are your own home. So I'm going to put the candle down. Enjoy your time on your infinity point. Enjoy your time with Mother Mary. And, and please know if this is not like any sort of religious doctrine with her. She's an amazing mentor, high priestess. And we're going to start and I will see you on the other side, everyone. All right, let's begin.
just start taking some nice cleansing breaths. And gently opening your eyes if they're closed and stretching in whatever way feels good. And I'm gonna burn a little bit of sage. So just let yourself connect with the sacred sage, the sacred smoke. So it helps you to come back safely. The beauty way, grounded. So just Imagine I'm there in front of you, hovering the smoke over the crown of your head, around your aura on your back, the back of your heart, the front of your throat, the front of your heart, your feet. And of course, this is happening. Just clearing that. All right. That was quite a trip we took there. <laughs> that was really, yeah, I'll, I'll share it another time but that that was very uh, multi-dimensional for me at least and um yeah i just felt like our souls were so rejoicing that we were gathered together in this way so if you've got your tea i have my same cup as yesterday but this time i have hot chocolate in here mexican hot chocolate with almond milk not dairy milk because you can't do dairy Wow, I feel very like Mayan right now, like connecting with my indigenous ancestors, drinking the chocolate after the sacred gathering. Mm. If you've never had Mexican hot chocolate, I highly recommend it. Okay, so um, if you want to share anything in the chat of window of how or the comment and Zoom, I'm like all about. I'm on Zoom all the time, that's why I said it in the comments. Feel free to, to share. I love to hear those, or you can share it after. I want to pull two cards for you. I'm, ch I'm distracted thinking, like, do I have chocolate over my mouth? No, okay. <laughs> I want to pull two cards and remind you on Thursday is the last virtual career Reiki. I sent it out on my newsletter. We're going to be, it's all about what we did today, right? It's like uh, integrating 2020 crossing the threshold, preparing for the threshold of 2021, getting clear on your divine prayer, activating, you know, I said earlier that unified field of our heart. What does that mean? Like, how do you activate that to create space, to connect with the future you? Mother Mary praying, I know it was so beautiful. I just... Yeah, it just felt so good to, you know, when she first showed up, I was like, what is she going to do? Is she going to anoint us or bless us? Or, and of course, all of that happens all the time too. But it was like, she was like, no, I'm just, I'm going to sit here or kneel here and pray for you. Like, it is my pleasure to pray for you. So I felt that such a privilege. All right. So thank you, Jan. Yes, she was there. I know. So let's do this is from the star temple oracle let's see what message comes to you leticia so good to see you we got the moonstone star passion i am entering a portal of euphoric love that is so awesome look at this goddess lady I love how she's got that star like right here, like right around, you know, root and sacral. So this is like that passion, right? Because our deepest longing prayer creates this beautiful passion, right? This passion for your creativity, this passion for compassion, you know, there's all of this. I love that. Look at her. And let's do a moon card since it is the new moon. I know I pulled two for you yesterday, but I'm kind of obsessing about this deck not these days. So let's see what's the message for you. Mm. So beautiful. I am of the earth and in harmony with nature. Look at this. 
I really love both of these together. Right? This one's so like star, galactic, right? That connection. And then this is like earth, earth connection. It's like we need both, right? Both of those, that balance. So there you are. All right, everyone, it's always such a great pleasure to connect with you. Tomorrow will be day six. Oh my gosh, yay! So we're, we're on our way with this nine day journey. Thank you so much, all of you who are connecting with me for the first time. It's always such a joy. And those of you who've been walking this path with me for a long time, it's, it's such an honor to have you alongside. Bye everyone, have a good night and good dreams. and. Send me prayers for good dreams. Not even good dreams. Yes, good dreams, but good sleep. That's good. So bye. Bye, everyone. See ya. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Glad you were here.